Welcome, Eagles, to a, another edition of Tradcat Night Radio. I am Eric Gajewski, founder and owner of Tradcat Night, your one-stop website for all the day's latest church apostasy and end-time news. That's right, folks. Tradcat Night is featured all over the alternative media circuit. I'm doing my best to keep you up to date on all the latest happenings from around the world as we head closer to the fruition of the third secret of Fatima, the arrival of the biblical false prophet and antichrist, Maitreya. Make sure you subscribe to Tradcat Night right now for all the latest videos. And today is July the 23rd, 2018. And these talks can be found all over the place, whether it's Veterans Today, Minds.com, PubeTube, BitChute, Steam at DTube, or also on uh, your phones now. So you can search Tradcat Night on iTunes, Google Play, Player.fm, SoundCloud.com, and now my exclusive podcast, which will not be featured to... Uh, the public, uh, outside of the, the, the paid premium site now is featured on tradcatnight.org. And I had a blockbuster talk last week, which caused a little bit of a stir, uh, concerning just how close we are to the three days of darkness. So you don't want to miss, uh, that talk. Uh, and while we're speaking about it, uh, very briefly, just a quick recap over the weekend. Wow. We had some great Live shows had Father Kramer with an exclusive talk, which is available only on the premium site, tradcatnight.org. I will leave in the description box and the comment box how to sign up. You simply just click that link. Uh, you will be pr you'll be prompted to the website, and then you'll see uh, a little sentence there saying click uh, for membership to the tradcatnight.org page. Uh, Stripe, the payment processor, is uh, fast, easy, it's secure. I've been using it for quite some time, uh, as well as PayPal. Never had any issues. Uh, so please join us today. We already have hundreds of members, and we're a little over a week in. And there, I've added a lot of content to the premium page over the past uh, 48 hours. So there's a lot of sections to peruse through. And again, more than likely, starting in the new year, folks, I'm going to be rolling over <clears throat> all of the information from the blog page straight into that paid premium page. So uh, without get, you know, signing up, uh, there'll, there'll be no access to just the general information that I put out on a regular. So make sure you sign up today. Uh, get used to the website. There's a cool feature along the right-hand side, uh, a live chat where you can post a comment and all the members in the group will see it and people can kind of talk back and forth. You can make general comments. I've got a section now for advertisements to where with your $5 uh, purchase into the website. You can post your own, uh, whatever it is you're trying to sell. If you've got your own small business, if you've got a group, whatever it is, kind of like a classified section, but it's it's free to you for those who uh, do sign up for the website. And uh, I've added a lot of resources down along the right-hand side for you traditional Catholics out there. And before I get into today's talk concerning uh, the society, just more Brief commentary on uh, the society in general. Perhaps we'll talk about the 1974 declaration of Archbishop Lefebvre. Uh, but as I've been mentioning this past, well, several weeks now, folks, uh, we've got about 10% of the daily Tradcat Night followers, day in, day in and day out followers who are only contributing to this apostle. Uh, in order for me to maintain this, in order for me to continue to do this as is, I need everyone's support going forward. So please make that commitment to at least uh, getting uh, on board with a $10 contribution uh, to Tradcat Night. There's an auto payment uh, system there on PayPal, which you can just set that up and then pretty much just uh, forget about it. But going forward, uh, as I've been mentioning, we need uh, better support uh, from all of you. Uh, so what I wanted to talk about today... Uh, if I could, was, well, as many of you are seeing in the traditional world, we've got Bishop Fillet and Father Schmidtberger now appointed this new novel position in the society as advisors to the new SSPX leadership. And uh, I kind of broke this news because I think it was Mark Galagos, a follower of TriCat Night, who emailed me while I was talking to Father Kramer, actually about this on the live show and, and, and Father Kramer didn't know about this and, and neither did I because it was just published uh, that Bishop Filet and Father Schmidtberger now came back uh, onto the scene. So you thought they were going away and so kind of today in comical uh, form, if you will, 
posted uh, reposted a blog from uh, Novus Ordo Watch indicating uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger with that famous mem of I'll be back. And so with the society concluding its general chapter in Swissy Cone, uh, which meets every six years and elects the superior every 12 years, the election of the superior general had been placed on the agenda. In July 11th, the announcement was made that Father David Pagliarini had been elected, replacing Bishop Filet. And of course, we had been hearing these rumors that Bishop Filet didn't want it anymore, but that, does that mean that he's truly out of the picture? And obviously, we know that he's not. Now, the problem is, is I know some people who are kind of like more on the fence between maybe the positions of the resistance and the society are like, well, it seems to be okay now. Well, the problem is they've already gone too far. The SSPX has already gone too far. So unless Father Paglarini comes back to truly what Archbishop Lefebvre said on Vatican II, which is we can't accept this thing, period, and not know more of this. Uh, we can, you know, Vatican II was a legit Catholic council. and We can accept 95% in light of tradition. No, it's a quote unquote council, which is going to be made null and void. They've already gone too far. And we see how liberal they're getting with their, uh, language in certain areas and certain chapels, you know, denoting the, the true mass as the extraordinary form. We see them already adopting all this pseudo traditionalism that Archbishop Lefebvre had warned about. And he said it was poison. So people in the society better wake up um and, and that's kind of the sad reality is that i've said this before on the radio much like you can't talk to someone in the conciliar church and try to point out the errors of francis you can't do that about to anyone in the society so it's very kind of cult-like in that fashion i mean god god forbid you should ever uh mention you know saint filet in such a fashion and point out his errors uh and what he's been doing and i've been documenting this for years uh, all of the atrocities coming from him uh, personally. And most recently in 2016, he can't even get proper doctrine right uh, on the Jews. To me, he's a full-fledged Zionist. I see no other uh, I see no other reason to say it in any other fashion. And Zionists are, are not Catholics. It's, it's that simple. Now, the position of the general counselor did not exist before. It's a bit surprising that a new superior general who had already been a first and a second assistant uh, one of whom was Bishop Galaretta, should suddenly be given two additional advisors, especially when the two advisors just so happened to be the two preceding <laughs> superior generals. Now this is rightly pointed out by Nova Sorta Watch. I mean, in great irony, the the two past uh, superior generals who, you know, from our perspective, you know, it was just they kept moving left and left and left, are now these counselors. Hmm. Go figure. So, uh, Novus Ordo Watch actually pointed out um, how even St. Vacantis, uh, trying to create suspicion about the SSPX, uh, but also uh, Michael Matt, even of the remnant, the false right remnant uh, crowd, uh, who can hardly be accused of taking a strong anti-filet line, they say, made known his misgivings about the move. This is, this is actually what uh, Michael Matt has to say. While this development may well prove to be a good thing at first glance, it is somewhat confusing from the vantage point of an outside observer. It looks something like a general manager of a baseball team announcing his intention to keep his two previous baseball managers knocking around to the front office to quote-unquote advise the new guy on how to establish a different style of leadership. bit awkward for everyone. Keep them around if you want, but why make the big announcement that seems to send mixed signals without wishing to take anything away from the good job done uh, from these men? <laughs> No thank you, Michael Matt. I'm sure the SSPX leadership can appreciate why some traditional Catholics are a bit apprehensive uh, over this announcement since they were looking forward to a fresh approach with a new coaching staff rather than an apparent reshuffling effort that may mean business as usual when it comes to a whole host of problems blamed, fairly or not, on the previous quote-unquote coaching staff. And this includes ardent supporters of Bishop Flay who want what is best for the society. So that was uh, even Michael Matt's take on this, uh, of course. So, you know, are they going to make an agreement? Personally, I don't I don't see that happening. Um, I know Bishop Valet in times past has said if, if, if the right situation did occur, they would basically go ahead and do so knowing that a split would occur. I, I, I still don't see it. Uh, you know, again, they've already gone too far for me. 
but I, I don't see them uh, making that agreement. Um, so what Dr. Hanowski uh, points out uh, very clearly is that the SSPX has to continue to define itself with the Archbishop's Declaration uh, in 1974, which states this, We hold fast with all our hearts and soul to Catholic Rome, guardian of the Catholic faith and the traditions necessary to preserve this faith, to eternal Rome, mistress of wisdom and truth. We refuse, on the other hand, and we always have refused to follow the Rome of the neo-modernist, the neo-Protestant tendencies, which were clearly evident in the Second Vatican Council. Did you hear that? In the Second Vatican Council, my pseudo-trad friends. And after the council, in which all the reforms uh, issued from it. All these reforms indeed have contributed and are still contributed to the destruction of the church, to the ruin of the priesthood, to the abolition of the sacrifice of the mass and of the sacraments, to the disappearance of religious life, to a naturalist, uh, Tehardanian teaching in universities, basically evolution, seminaries and catechetics, a teaching derived from liberalism and Protestantism, many times condemned by the solemn magisterium. Now, no authority, not even the highest in the hierarchy, can force us to abandon or diminish our Catholic faith so express, uh, expressed and professed by the church's magisterium for 19 centuries. But though we, says St. Paul, or an angel from heaven, preach a gospel to you besides the one that we have preached to you, let him be anathema. We know that the Vatican II gospel is not our gospel. It's a different gospel, as Pope St. Pius X indicates. Is it not that this Holy Father is repeating to us today, he says? And if we can discern a certain contradiction in his words and deeds, as well as those uh, of the dicasteries, well, we choose what was always taught, and we turn a deaf ear to the novelties destroying the church. It is impossible to modify profoundly the Lex Orande without modifying the Lex Credende. To the Novus Ordo Missae correspond a new catechism, a new priesthood, new seminaries, a charismatic Pentecostal church, all things opposed to orthodoxy and the perennial teaching of the church. Now this reformation, born of liberalism and modernism, is poisoned through and through. It derives from heresy and ends in heresy even uh, if all of its acts are not formally heretical it is therefore impossible for any conscientious and faithful catholic to espouse this reformation and we're speaking just in general overall to the vatican II revolution in general the council itself the reforms the only adult attitude of faithfulness to the church and of catholic doctrine in our view of salvation is a categorical refusal to accept this vatican II reformation this is why, without any spirit of rebellion, bitterness, or resentment, we pursue our work of forming priests with the timeless magisterium as our guide. We are persuaded that we can render no greater service to the church, to the sovereign pontiff and posterity. This is why we hold fast to all that had been believed and practiced in faith and morals, liturgy, teaching of the catechism, formation of the priest, and institution of the church. By the church of all time, to all these things is codified in the books which saw uh, day before the modernist influence in the council. This we shall do until such time that the true light of tradition dissipates the darkness obscuring the sky of eternal Rome. And really, in truth and reality, I might interject right here, the, the sky isn't going to clear. I mean, Rome is going to be buried and split and crushed. Pagan Rome is going to be destroyed ultimately. It's it's the Catholic faith and the not or the Catholic church in terms of the papacy in the not-so-distant future, is not even going to be in Rome. It's going to go elsewhere. In my opinion, it will end up in Fatima, Portugal. And then after the storm clears, so to speak, during the triumph of the Immaculate Heart, it seems quite clear from the teaching teachings of the early fathers and some esteemed writers that the papacy will then move to Jerusalem after the Jew Jews convert. Quite interesting. So we kind of have, we look back in history, we saw how Rome was first pagan, then converted to Catholicism. And in somewhat parallel, we now see the Rothschild puppet state of Israel, which is set up, which is the synagogue of Satan, and it's basically controlling everything. It will be the capital of the New World Order and the capital of the Antichrist. But then after that is crushed, we will see Catholicism, true Catholicism, come down into that area. So let us call to mind uh, what the good words of the Archbishop, the good Archbishop, have said in November 21st. 1974 and realize that we all are in a fight and this is what i was trying to call the troops to if you will this past weekend uh, on the live shows 
is that we we are still in the fight now, folks. It's, it, now is not the time to ab- abandon the Catholic faith and become Orthodox or move over to some other sect or just not practice religion at all or just give up. No, this, this is you know, adversity is what makes a true Christian. I mean, we're supposed to take up our cross. We're not supposed to go put it down and uh, you know go wander off. If we do, we'll lose our souls. And so we have to continue to pray for priests. And then, by the way, I just received a, another email uh, this morning from a Novus Ordo priest. Uh, I can't even recall his name. Father Don Premi, I think was his name. Uh, I think he heads kind of like the indult groups, Latin Mass Live, I believe it was on Instagram, who is expressing uh, his sincere gratitude for this apostolate, uh, my work, uh, just in general for Trad Cat Night. And uh, so we've got to continue to pray for for eyes to be uh, wide open in these times, so to speak, for for souls to wake up. So we've got to continue to pray for the true Pope Benedict XVI, for prelates, for priests, for poor souls in purgatory, and for poor sinners like you or I. Again, folks, click the PayPal button on the Blogspot page or on the Tradcat Night page. If you don't want to go that route, cash, check, money, order, send me an email to Apostle of Mary at hotmail.com and I'll send you the mailing address. I've got a lot more still to do. Goodness, I've been up at the, the break of dawn. Been working all day, getting out a lot of information. Still got a lot more to do. About to do an exclusive podcast, which will be featured only on tradcatnight.org. You won't want to miss that one. Folks, continue to keep me in prayers. I will keep you in prayer. And if you'd like to spend 10, 15 minutes and talk, you're confused about something, send me an email as well, Apostle of Mary at hotmail.com. Love to take time out and speak with you all. Typically, Fridays are the days that I have more time to do that. But uh, certainly, I will answer any of your questions uh, as you email me. So, my good friends, until next time, you can look forward to some more podcasts uh, throughout the week. We've got the live call-in shows again coming up uh, this weekend. A lot going on at Tradcat Night as we continue to smash modernism as we continue to dredge along as knights and handmaids. And Tradcat Knight is picking up even more and more steam. And our haters are not liking it. Until next time, my good friends, keep your wings spread as an eagle in faith and hope. Ave Maria. <laughs>